Hey everybody, how's it going? Marcos Vegas for Fight Up TV in partnership with Stagefront VIP, where you can get all your VIP and hospitality packages for all the big upcoming fights, such as Eubank versus Ben and many, many more. I'm being joined with Eddie Hearn, who's uh, up bright and early over there in England. Eddie, man, uh, let, let's get right to it. I don't have uh, too much uh, time with you, but uh, first off, breaking news, Jake Paul, Anderson Silva. What's your reaction? Um, I don't know, really. I mean, I don't know much about that world. I mean, I know Anderson Silva is, is he 50 yet or he's about to turn 50, 49 or something like that. So, but he's uh, shown that he's capable with, with, uh, in the boxing game. Obviously, a, a legend in the MMA sport as well. I think it's a good opponent. I think uh, it's intriguing. It's, it's not a boxer, which I guess was the, you know, the stigma that, and, and the, you know, the, um, the criticism that Jake faces a lot. But at the same time, he's a man that's familiar with combat sports. He can definitely box. And I think it's, I think it's, in, it's an intriguing matchup. You know, switching uh, topics now, Eddie, you mentioned uh, Fury. And AJ, has a contract been sent to you yet to make that fight happen? No, it hasn't. Um, but that's not a criticism of, of the other side. I mean, you know, first is we know my relationship with Queensbury and Frank Warren has, has never been the greatest. In fact, I've never met Frank Warren in 15 years of promoting or whatever I've been doing, which is quite bizarre. But I did have a, a pleasant conversation with his son who's a lot closer to my age and seems like a sensible guy. And um, I didn't really know what to think. And I still don't really know what to think, Marcos, in all honesty, because, you know, it was a, two weeks ago, Tyson Fury was retired. Then he was fighting or making offers to fight Derek Chisora. Then he was fighting Alexander Usyk. Then I think he retired again. Then he said he's only ever fighting if he gets 500 million. Then he calls out Ty, uh, AJ, you know, out of nowhere. So... We take it quite seriously because, don't forget, we signed for that fight um, a year ago and the fight got cancelled because of the arbitration process with Deontay Wilder. So, And AJ was gutted at the time because he really wanted to fight Tyson Fury. So our plan has always been, since the Usyk fight, to come back, fight in December, fight in March, get some activity, which is something that's really been starving him over the last couple of years, and get back to a shot to the world heavyweight title. Now, there's lots of reasons to do that, you know, working with the new team, improving, getting the confidence back, et cetera. But at the same time, AJ is a fighter and he wants to fight Tyson Fury. So when this supposed offer came in initially, I took it to AJ and he said, look, I guess they're going to offer me a shit deal and, you know, this and that. And um, But December 17th is the date we said I'd be ready by. and if we can get around that date, I'll take it. If the offer's right, you know, it's a shot at the world heavyweight title. I think I can beat him, et cetera, et cetera. So an offer came in, saying offer terms came in yesterday, um, of which, you know, it was, it's quite funny. We agreed to sort of keep it between us because the whole thing blows out of control. I've been there before. I've made mistakes. He said that, she said that. Next thing, someone's got the hump, someone's pulled out, et cetera. So, Myself and George Warren said, look, let's just keep this cordial. And then 10 seconds later, Tyson Fury told the world what the offer was. Um, and the offer was what he said. It was 60-40. It did also come with a rematch clause, which is, you know, he's, he's a champion, no problem. Interestingly, when Anthony Joshua was champion, we made the same offer to Tyson Fury of 60-40. And he turned it down. He wanted 50-50 at the time when he wasn't even champion. So that was interesting. but. Having spoken to Anthony Joshua last night, we actually are okay with 60-40. Um, the rematch clause, if they want a rematch clause, we understand. We want them to flip the, the split, quite rightfully so, if AJ was then world heavyweight champion. They came back with a date of November 12, which was the curveball, uh, and I think was the get-out-of-jail card, because I still don't feel like they want to do this fight. But we came back and, and just said, listen, December 17th is the date we're working towards. He's just finished his fight with uh, Usyk. He's got a couple of like minor bruises and bumps. He's on a little league, but he'll come straight back and get into camp for December. 
So we've gone back to them and, and with a few issues. Obviously, AJ has a global exclusive deal with the zone. AJ has his deal with BT, but we're already talking about overcoming those those hurdles. So I don't want to get people excited because I just don't always believe a lot of what Tyson says. But certainly, if they were calling our bluff, the bluff's been called. And we and, and ultimately we accept. And um we've written back to say 60-40. We accept those terms. As I said, you want the rematch clause, flip the rematch, you know. We have to go December, don't play games, and there's no reason why you can't fight in December. In fact, his promotional company, we found out last night, have got December 17th held at the Millennium Stadium, which is where the fight would take place. So, yeah, I, I, again, we'll see if they're calling our bluff. But AJ, I think AJ should come back and have a couple of fights against some top 15 guys. But he said, look, I may never get the chance to fight Fury, so if it's real, let's do it. Wow, you're making it seem like the major points have been agreed on, and you're giving me like hope, like this fight's gonna happen. happen. Yeah, the financial. T- I mean, look, I expected him to make an offer of seventy-five, twenty-five, seventy, thirty, just to say. And listen, honestly, I think AJ is worth more than forty percent in terms of his commercial draw. And and when we're in the reverse situation, Fury didn't accept the fight at sixty forty, but we do. So at this moment in time, if we fight in December, like he said he would, if we, we accept 60-40 like he's offered, and obviously the rematch as well, plus sorting out the other stuff, and I don't, I'm not putting that in to block it all, but that's just contractually factual, and they know that, and we've already stated with George Warren that we can try and overcome that, then I think we'll, we'll do the fight. But I still... I just don't, you know, it's very difficult to take this guy seriously if you look at the chronological statements that he's made over the last three or four weeks. You know, but if he genuinely wants to fight, then we're ready to make it happen. So what happens next then? You you, you guys responded to so them, said that the offer we've was good. Back, we've said, yeah, we accept 60 so points the happens? rematch the other way around. We, we have to meet and go through the other points. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know why they offered November 12th, um, but they did. And um, obviously, that's, you know, that's a non-star for us. He's away and, like, there's no difference between November 12th and December, like, in terms of a fighter's schedule, you know. So we'll just see what they say. I'm not, you know, I do this interview today. I'm trying not to do too many interviews because I don't want to say something that's going to upset someone. And then all of a sudden, the negotiations break down. So... Very positive, pleasant conversations with George Warren and Queensbury. And we'd like to try and make it happen. Long way to go. But certainly, Fingers as crossed. I said, if, if Tyson Fury was calling, calling the bluff, it, we accept. So now where does that leave Usyk, Eddie, and, and his contract status um, and, and all that? He has no contract with anyone at the moment. So he's sitting there waiting for an undisputed fight in the Middle East, of which I think is stated to happen in spring of next year. Um, I believe Saudi wanted to make that fight happen for December. So that was when when Fury was supposed to be fighting, December. Um, but then Usyk wasn't ready, obviously. you know. And, and this is another thing with AJ. Like, it's all very well Tyson Fury saying, well, how can you not be ready? You know, you just had a 12-round fight that wasn't really that tough. And like... They had, well, AJ had an 11-month camp, really, for that fight. You know, and Usyk had a tough camp. You know, obviously the problems in Ukraine. And it was a tough fight for Usyk and AJ. So it's not just a case of, oh, okay, what was it, eight or nine weeks' time, go back in and fight, you know, for the world heavyweight title again. Like, they're going to need their time. AJ would be ready for December. Usyk wouldn't. Um, So I guess he's just sitting there waiting right now on the undisputed fight, which should take place uh, in the spring, I believe. Hmm. Which could be Anthony Joshua against Alexander Usyk. Three. Could be. Could be. Could be <laughs> three, yeah. Um, so he, he's no longer under contract. Uh, obviously, you guys are going to go ahead and approach him and, and try to you know reach yeah, some sort I of think, deal, right? Yeah, I think we've had, a, listen, we've had a great run. I can't remember how many fights it is we've done together. Seven fights or six fights. 
made him a huge amount of money. Um, and he's been brilliant. He's been brilliant. You know, I think this deal coming up with the Saudis, if, if that happens with Undisputed, you know, they, in the last fight, they controlled the rights for that fight. And if they do that again, it's quite difficult to bring value outside of almost just representing you, if that makes sense. So he's in a good position. Alex Krasuk, Igis Klimas, good team of people around him. So I'm sure he'll, he'll wait and rest with his family and see what's next. In terms of what's next, say um, the fight between Joshua and Fury happens in December and Usyk sort of waits and maybe he has to take a fight uh, in the meantime just to stay active. Who would that be, you feel? I don't know. I don't think he would, Marcus. I think that a lot of those guys, you know, I don't see Usyk as someone who's going to go on for another five years fighting every challenger in the division. Like, he was the undisputed cruiserweight world champion. He's the unified world heavyweight champion. If he fights for the undisputed and wins, he's the undisputed heavyweight world champion. And I, I think he's also no spring chicken. So... I, I, I maybe only see him, you know, I'm, I'm only speaking as a fan. I don't really haven't had these conversations with him, but I don't think he fights much beyond that undisputed fight if he wins because he's kind of completed boxing. I don't think the problem is, is once you've earned that kind of level of money, how do you drop back to virtually, you know, uh, a small percent of that money to take on a mandatory or to take on a young, hungry, voluntary defence when you don't really need to, you know? So, I think he'll sit and wait. I, I do. You know, he's in no rush after that fight. I'm sure he's going to spend time with his family now and see what happens in his homeland. Um, but I, I think he'll wait. Thank you so much for watching this video. And make sure to subscribe for more videos of your favorite fighters over here on Fight Up TV. And give us a follow online as well at Fight Up TV, on Twitter, and on Instagram. We appreciate it, guys.